Coming up on The Local Traveler, we check out the craft beer movement in Lexington. More and more people are seeking out locally made beers, and the Brewgrass Trail is creating a new standard for what good beer should be. We get an up-close view of Blue Stallion Brewing to check out their unique beers, food trucks, and special events. So don't miss this episode of The Local Traveler. It's sure to make you hoppy. It's no secret that Lexington loves craft beer. As a matter of fact, there's even a Lexington Craft Beer Week and a Brewgrass Trail, which showcases eight different local breweries. The trails become so popular for tourists and locals that a Brewgrass Trail passport was created to help keep track of your craft brew journey. So far, we local travelers have visited places like Alltech Lexington Brewing and Distilling Company, where we met founder and president Pierce Lyons and sampled their acclaimed bourbon barrel ale. Country Boy Brewing, where I learned how to correctly pour and sampled some of their unconventional brews. Ethereal Brewing, located in the historic and hip Peppermill Distillery Complex, and West Six Brewing Company, where several businesses share a synergistic and delicious partnership. Next, we stamp our sixth stop and our craft brewery trek. Today, we're visiting Blue Stallion Brewing on West 3rd Street in Lexington, where they specialize in crafting traditional ales and lagers. Let's go have a taste. The Blue Stallion Brewing Company's been brewing since 2011 by its five founders, brothers Corey, Xavier, and Zach Donnelly, along with Nico Schultz and Jim Clemens. Although Lexington has a myriad of breweries to choose from, each one is unique and Blue Stallion Brewing is no different. They saw a need in the marketplace for traditional beer styles of Europe that were developed over centuries of brewing. They offer a range of styles to delight both the craft beer enthusiast as well as the first time craft beer drinker. I'm talking with Corey Donnelly and he's the co-founder of Blue Stallion Brewing here in Lexington. Thanks for having us out today. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. We appreciate that. Well, I'm really excited about Lexington and all the great craft beer options that are here. Talk to me a little bit about the craft beer community. So um, there are several new breweries in Lexington uh, in, in the last couple of years. We all have collaborated on various beers. We get together and have a good time together. Uh, it's a really fun community uh, and we see each other quite a bit uh, and have an opportunity to uh, share recipe ideas, technique ideas, process ideas, and, and that's been a big benefit for us at least, and I think it's been a benefit for the others as well. Well, that's true, and, and, and each brewery really has its own niche. I mean, that they've got something that they're really doing, mm -hmm. and, and you're no different. You kind of have a niche here too, right? Yeah, that's right. We, uh, we try to focus on lager beers. So traditionally, there are two general styles of beer, lagers and ales. We decided that we wanted to focus on lagers, which um, are fermented a little bit colder, and because they ferment colder, they take a little bit more time, but they often are very crisp, clean, malt-forward beers, and, and we thought that would be something that would give a lot more choice to the beer drink in Lexington and so that's where we have uh, kind of carved out our, our niche here in town. Well yeah that's true because ales they, they're a little quicker right so you can you can get them out quicker but lagers take a little more time and attention to detail and you guys are using very traditional methods. We wanted to make beers that way the old way with uh, the traditional ingredients without cutting any corners and we wanted to do a beer the way you know they used to do it so you could have a very fresh beer experience and try the beers the with the flavor profiles you would get if you were actually in Germany or in England with the type of beers we make. Yeah, that's great. You don't even have to break out your passport. You can just come down the street and <laughs> right. take a trip to Germany. That's right. <laughs> well, another thing I really like about your beer offerings is you have such a great variety. I mean, you've got the darker ones, the heavier ones, um, but then you go all the way to like Radler. You do really offer something for everyone. Yeah, we try to have beers with low alcohol, beers with high alcohol, beers with hop character, beers with malt character, um, something that would appeal to a large audience. And so, for instance, the, you mentioned the Rather, which is a mixture of our house-made lemonade and our Hellas beer that we mix in line and tap. Um, and it's become very popular, especially in the summer mm -hmm. with men and women, but you know, when people come in and they're with their significant other and they say, well, you know, they like beer and I don't, I, I won't have anything, we often invite them to try the Rattler and more often than not, they, they enjoy it. It's a good way to introduce a non-craft beer drinker to the product and, and get them to try something different. And no craft beer drinker drank a 12% very, very bitter Imperial IPA as their very first craft beer <laughs> and loved it, you know? So everybody right. needed kind of that 
uh, transition beer from you know what they were used to the yellow American lagers to something uh, with a lot more flavor and 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 character to it. So we try to offer both those transitional beers and the more interesting full flavor, high alcohol, high bitterness beers as well. But um, we wanted to make sure we had that core of transition beer for people to try. Well, and you guys also do, is it Test test Batch Tuesdays? That's right. So uh, every week on Tuesday, we take interesting ingredients or a new type of yeast or trying out a new process for brewing. And uh, we make 15 to 30 gallons of a new beer every Tuesday. Uh, wow. And we put that on tap and it allows us to try things that we may not ever do on the big system or test out recipes that we want to make, but we're, we're trying to dial in some of the, the properties. Or if we think, hey, you know, if, if we roast pecans and, and add pistachios and do something that may be not cost effective to do on, you know, a 500 gallon thing, you can still do it and offer it to the public and um, try something real fun that way. And so it, it allows us to do something different while still um, you know, keeping to our traditions with the, the more core beers we offer. Well, I'm excited. I understand you, you're still bottling some of those beers and there's some beers to, to try out today that you're testing and you even have the Rattler in stock, so I'm excited about that. Would you take me around and let's try some beer? Absolutely, let's go <laughs> tasting. The breweries in Lexington really do have a collaborative mentality and often spur each other on creatively. They recognize and embrace that there is power in numbers. But it's not just the other local breweries that Blue Stallion Brewing supports. They also go local in plenty of other ways. When we come back, we learn more about the local foods, music, and art to offer here. It's all coming up after the break. Today, we're learning about the Brewgrass Trail in Lexington. We've made other stops along the trail on other shows, but this episode, it's all about Blue Stallion Brewing Company. We talked with co-founder Corey Donnelly about what makes his brew so unique and their collaboration with other local breweries. But his love for local does not end there. So you have a lot of different ways that you're involved in the community here in Lexington. I mean, I know that Lexington's embraced you and embraced the craft beer movement, mm -hmm. and you're embracing Lexington. You have lots of ways that you're involved in the community. Absolutely. Uh, Lexington's been so supportive of us. Uh, you know, we want to do what we can to give back. Um, in addition to that, my family um, and, and there are our other co-owners that are brothers of mine. We've all been involved in the art community for years, and our mother taught art for her whole career. So we want to do especially embrace the arts as well. So we do several different programs. We have an artist of the month where every month we bring in a local Lexington or surrounding area artist to showcase their work. We also do what we call Mission Mondays, which is our kind of in-house community support program where every Monday we invite a nonprofit that impacts Lexington or the region and we provide space for them. We offer 10% of our gross sales as a donation and we encourage them to come in and do silent auctions and get their information out to the public and um, you know we use our social media outreach to make sure people understand what the event is and what this group does uh, most recently we did a mission Monday with seed leaf which does really cool food work with people in need uh, we've done work with the Alzheimer's Association of Kentucky and um, lots of groups bluegrass Conservancy uh, a wide ranging uh, type of um, impact in Lexington. I think it's it's a good way for us to show that, hey, you all been good to us, what can we do back? And so uh, we encourage anybody that has a nonprofit to get in touch with us and we'll try to get you on the schedule as soon as we can. That's awesome. Well, you also have another great thing, uh, live music here. And I mean, there's just nothing that pairs better with good cold beer than great <laughs> live music. I agree. So every Wednesday night we, we have live music. Uh, it's almost always a local act, which is really cool. And uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Lexington has a really cool, vibrant local music scene. With all kinds of groups come in, but it's it's really fun. Wednesday evenings, it's a good opportunity to sit, relax. Of course, we we never charge a cover, so it's it's not about trying to, uh, <laughs> to, to make money. We just want you to come and be entertained and have a good time uh, and maybe drink a few beers. Sure. Well, and it has a very relaxed vibe, right? The music really, I think, pairs well with 
kind of what you're doing here and what you're all about here. So it's a, it doesn't ever seem overpowering. It's just kind of really good enhancement. Yeah, we always wanted the tap room side of the brewery to be a place where people felt like they could come, relax, maybe do some work or sit with friends and enjoy themselves. And we don't have a restaurant in-house at the moment, so we've been partnering with all the local food trucks in town uh, to come and provide dinner seven days a week, which has been a really fun way for people to try different kinds of foods and all the menus involved. And Lexington actually has a very cool set of food trucks. You know, it's a very mutually beneficial arrangement. They, they allow people to have a meal here, which means they can stay longer. And we provide, you know, kind of a built-in audience for, for that food truck so they aren't, you know, parked on some street downtown hoping somebody walks by. So we, we've really enjoyed the relationships we've built with those, those folks. Partnering with food trucks is a great way for breweries to collaborate with other local businesses and offer exciting fare for customers. There's a rotating list at Blue Stallion, and we happened upon one of my very favorites, gastronomes. This mobile slice of culinary enchantment offers farm-to-table fare and specializes in seasonal and local menus. One thing you can always count on from the gnomes is a crazy good craft burger and melt-in-your-mouth sweet dessert. Well, I love that Gastronomes pretty much makes the circuit. Of, we, we do, yeah. Yeah, you guys are everywhere. Well, this has always been one of our original spots. You know, we're, we're a big fan of Blue Stallion, and they've always really kind of been in our corner. So, um, yeah, we've, we've built not only a relationship with the brewery, but with, uh, with some farmers through the brewery. There's actually a big connection between these things, right? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> so we, uh, we buy all of our burger, and actually now pork and lamb, but 100% of our burger meat comes from Graveland Meats in Georgetown. And uh, Pokey Graves is the owner of Graveland Meats, but he also happens to own the lumberyard in Georgetown, which is actually where this piece of wood came from. <laughs> uh, but the connection goes even deeper in that all of his cattle is grass raised and then finished on grain from this brewery. So, you know, when you're eating a burger of ours at Blue Stallion, you can sit at the table that came from the farmer that cut the wood himself and his cattle was raised on the grain from the beer you're drinking. So There's so much synergy and kind yeah, of yeah, it's pretty much scary the cycle of life. Yeah, yeah, you can't beat it. <laughs> Well, what you're doing in the food truck is, I mean, it's amazingly creative. Well, thank I mean, you've you. got some serious culinary chops going it's, on in it, there. It's just taking the, the technique from our backgrounds and applying it to a little more palatable, a little more approachable street food. Well, I'm sure that um, going to all the different breweries is not a bad deal for you. Not at you all. You get this to is, drink lots of fun beers I've, each I've time. Been, I've been known to put a few back. <laughs> But this was definitely the demographic we wanted to hit. So this was always kind of our dream was to like, let's build this truck the way we want it, let's build these menus the way we want it, and let's focus on these breweries and really hit it home. Do you have a favorite beer here at uh, Blue Stallion? Is here at Blue Stallion? Um, well, it actually is the one that's being released this week, which I love, and it's only this time of year. And uh, that's their Maibach, which I'm obsessed with. Um, but, you know, that and their Oktoberfest are kind of my go-tos. If you're not quite up for a meal, but are in need of a local snack, then Blue Stallion Brewing's got you covered there too. You can delight your taste buds with something different, distinct, decadent, and delicious. D's Nuts. This gourmet nut company, which happens to be the one and only Kentucky Proud Nut Company, offers the bourbon trail mix or spicy beer cheese peanuts, both available at the bar. You brought some fun products to try? I did. We have a spicy beer cheese peanut. We also have our bluegrass trail mix. Uh, and we are the only Kentucky Proud Nut in the entire state and in existence. I read that. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, we think so. So <laughs> thank you. And you have, these are the two that you offer here at Blue Stallion, but you actually have quite a variety. Uh, yes, we do. Um, our main seller is a honey burnt pecan, which you'll find in several different restaurants around Lexington um, and different salads, desserts, you know, for instance, waffles. Uh, pancakes, cinnamon rolls, um, and that's actually in our trail mix. We coupled that with dark chocolate, pretzels, and cashews. So. so you just sit around snacking all day, just coming up with ideas? S sitting around eating nuts, coming up with new ideas. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Do you have a favorite nut? My favorite nut is the spicy beer cheese peanut, but I like beer and I also like spicy. So those two go very well together. Well, things are going well. I'm excited to try these. Yeah, please do. After all of that local food fun, it might be time for a cold one. And what could be better than to enjoy it listening to local music? Tonight we're treated to some hockey talk from the Kentucky Hoscats, who play both originals and covers with a hot band era sound. 
After you visit all the breweries, make sure and show your passport to the Lexington Visitor Center for your very own one-of-a-kind Brewgrass Trail shirt to wear with pride. Make sure and add craft beer to your local travelers list. Shoot, shoot, shoot.